Hi guys and welcome back. It's been a little while since I uh, had a video up. I took a little bit of a video break since the Kickstarter ended, but I am ready to get back to it. This will probably be the last video that features a Memento Mori piece because I am ready to start infusing some uh, watercolors, some oil paintings, some other things back into my, my life and my schedule. So I wanted to talk a bit about the transition of going from ink back to watercolors and the things that I've learned for both kind of between the two. So there were a lot of things that I realized that I worked differently with the ink washes, which it actually behaves very similarly to watercolors. So it was a nice eye-opening experience to see some things that I could easily translate over to my watercolors that I really enjoyed. And this original painting is available at my shop. There's a link down in the description that'll take you over there if you're interested. But uh, let's go ahead and jump right in. So working with inks, I cultivate the textures far more. I love creating textures with inks. I love being able to create different types of textures for different objects within the piece. Like in this piece, eventually I'll get to it, but the wall behind the character, I wanted it to have a really grungy textural quality to it. And then I wanted the sky behind her to have like a stormy, cloudy sky kind of a texture, which similar, but different. And I loved being able to explore and shift the texture and add some wet on wet texturing into the piece while it was drying. And I just found that I enjoy the experience of building up these textures so much when I'm working with the inks, it frees me up. And I, I enjoy seeing how the medium itself behaves differently and how I can control it and how I can get new effects. I just loved that experimental free feeling of working with the textures with these inks. But when I'm working with watercolors, I find that I am far, far more reserved and selective with when I use textures. If I'm doing a sky, then I'll, I'll usually allow myself to play with the textures more and get this stormy looking cloudy sky because I love cloudy skies. But, but I find that I tend to be much more controlled with the, with the washes. I try to get as absolutely smooth a wash as possible, which most of the time I prefer, and I'm still going to prefer that, but I, I would like to loosen up a bit, especially in areas that really could benefit from just a little bit more interest and and letting that freedom of the watercolors come out I think would be really enjoyable. I think I would feel more engaged with the piece and less clinical like I'm just executing something that I just completely planned out from the beginning. So I'm excited to play with that more. So like in this piece with her dress there's a lot more texturing going on than if I were working in watercolors, if I was working in watercolors, I know that my default would have been to try to control it as heavily as possible. And I would have attempted to get a very smooth wash. I might have done another wash on top of it to create a little bit of a gradient from a darker to a lighter at the top of her dress. But overall, I, I think that I would have gotten a lot less of this grungy quality to it. And I think that it was an element that I'm really happy with in this piece. I like what it ended up doing for it. It told a little bit more of the story of the character. So, so that is one specific example that I know that I wouldn't have used textures, but for whatever reason, when I'm working with inks, I find that I'm, I let it happen and I want it to happen more. I think it's probably because I'm working entirely monochromatic with these that I, I want to find as much interest that I can add to it as possible. And I think also there's a certain amount of, of the fact that when I'm working with these pieces specifically, since they're, they're, they're in line with like my inktobers in the past where I, I don't do them in a day. I let myself take more time than that, but they're still done relatively quickly. I get one done and then I can move on to the next one. So I think that there's a certain amount of, because I'm trying to move quickly, I let go some of that control. And because of that, I've allowed myself to enjoy that more rather than getting frustrated by the breaks in a really smooth texture or in a really smooth wash. I allow it to happen and then I build up on it. 
probably one of the most obvious takeaways of working from inks, black and white, and then moving into watercolors is the values. When I'm working with watercolors, I almost always do a color study where I figure out where the colors are going to be and that also doubles as the value study. I'm working with colors and the values at the same time. But I I realized that I would like to have a much stronger understanding of where the values are going to be in my pieces and a much stronger control of the contrast in my pieces. When I've worked on these Inktober pieces where all I have are values, I find that I'm I'm relying stronger on the values to make sure that the eyes are going where I want them to be and that the piece reads the way I want it to be. But I've also found that after I finish a piece and I bring it in to add the digital color, which I'm doing for Memento Mori, when I've added the color, I've, I've found that a lot of times with these pieces, I feel restricted by the range of values that I put in the piece. And I think that that's just a testament of I'm not controlling the values as well as I could. I'm not understanding them as well and I'm not planning them out as well. And I know that that carries over to my watercolors when I'm working on them too. So I would really like to be able to do a value study and a color study for every one of my pieces. That way I can really just figure out where are the strongest contrasts going to be without it being like a secondary thing that I'm not focusing on as fully when I'm doing my color comps. And that is actually something that the the eye reads value first and then color second. So that should be the most important thing. And then after I can figure out the colors. So yes, I would love to get better at that. It's It's a certain weakness of mine that I'm excited to explore more. This one actually might sound a little funny, but moving back from inks where I've used completely monochromatic grays only, basically, grays and blacks and whites, I'd really love to use more grays in my watercolor pieces. I've noticed this more in the past. I, I have had times where I'll go in and just use so much color and so much saturation over the entirety of a piece that it becomes hard to have certain elements have more contrast with the colors and things don't stand out in the way that I'd like them to. So I'd like to utilize more grays, but also more just desaturated colors. I, th I think that that's something that I'm going to really enjoy. I have been trying to do that a little bit more over the past few months because I, I just, I really love grays. It's an under underappreciated color. I love the moodiness of it. I love that it's really mysterious. I love that it helps other colors really stand out. And those other colors don't have to be nearly as saturated to have that same saturated impact when it's compared to a gray color. So if I were to have painted this piece in watercolors instead of done in inks, I probably would have automatically picked blue for the background, but I still would have wanted it to be a cloudy kind of a, a scene and setting. So I probably would have gone with blue, but I think I would have gone with too saturated of a blue. So looking back at it through like this vision, this view of using inks, I can see that if I had gone in with a more desaturated blue, something that's just just barely colored, it would have kept that really moody quality to it. And then any color that I used in the character or the fox would have really just stood out so much more. And I wouldn't have needed those to be very saturated at all to have that kind of impact. But then if they were saturated, they would just really stand out. And my big takeaway from switching back from inks to watercolors is that I want to restart my quest for the perfect line work technique for my watercolors. I've talked about this in, this pa in the past and I've never actually found the solution. But working on all these Memento Mori pieces where I've been able to just use my Micron pens I've just had such an enjoyable time being able to control the line work and get really sharp results. I can build up the line weight exactly the way I want it. And switching back to watercolors where I do the line work after the fact with watercolors where it's really difficult to control the viscosity of the paint that I'm using to create the line work and it's hard to control the, the value of it so that it's dark enough to be opaque enough to cover up certain areas. I, I found that that process was just so 
tedious and unpleasant with watercolors, but I enjoyed it so much with these pieces. So I would like to find a technique that I can enjoy as much as I do with these microns. Hopefully I can find that. I, I've i tried a lot of different things and I think I'll just go back and, and uh, test out the ones that I have tried. Again, make sure that there's not any new techniques with those same mediums that I haven't tried before that I'd like to try again. But, but yeah, this just reminds me that there's, there has to be a perfect, there, there has to be something out there that can work better, that can be more enjoyable of a process for me for creating line work in my watercolors so that I can have the range of color that I want, but also the control. And that's it for today. I am so excited to be back with more color artwork after this. So stay tuned for that. And this piece is available at my shop. The original is up and it's looking for a new home. There's a link down in the description that'll take you over to my shop so you can check that out. But that is it for today. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.